we are we are living in an, an, an unusual time, and um, things are intersecting that in times past perhaps did not intersect the way that they are intersecting now. I was asked by a preacher friend of mine who is a very good friend of mine whom I have much respect for. He says, man, tell me this. I want to ask you something. I said, yes, sir. What got you into politics? And I said to him, brother, you wouldn't believe this, but I am not interested in politics. I um, have no political aspirations. I've been asked by numerous people if I would someday run for office. I'm in the office that God wants me in. I'm a preacher. And I've always said to them, thank you, but that's not my calling. I don't think that I'd make a good politician. I think I'd be a terrible politician. I don't think I have enough compromise in me to make a good one. Um, but I said... But the reason you hear me talk often about political things is that the world of the church and the world of politics are intersecting now. People have said to me, wouldn't you cannot legislate your morality? My response to them has, is always, no, but we're not going to stand back and allow you, without challenge, to legislate immorality. Because what is being legislated now is immorality. And, and you need to understand, as church people, as believers in Christ, that the more immorality is legislated, signed into law, the more hostile the nation becomes toward us. The us is code for Christians. The forces that be could care less whether you're black or white. The issue is not one of race or color, even though many times that's what's played out. It is the spirit of antichrist that is in the world. This is what I hope. We don't want to be too cool in here. I don't want to be. I hope our young people get this. Youth, let me let me, let me change for a minute. You can't afford to be stupid. You can't afford to hide behind. I'm young. Because times are different. The margin for error is much smaller than it has been in times past. And with the margin for error being what it is, then it behooves us that we encourage our young men and young women to mature and grow up faster. Now the truth is, we're behind the curve in the maturity thing anyway. Sometimes our guys screw up at 35 and we still call them children. When the Jewish boy gets his bar mitzvah at 12. And from then on, he's treated like a man. There has to be a call to personal accountability and responsibility. Uh, amongst us, or the enemy will destroy us. Hear me today. There are things that are going on in America. Um, there are powerful people who are trying to come against us. I have a picture in my hand of a homosexual mega donor. Uh, and he's going after 
if you all would put it on the screen, if you have it, I'd like for the people to see. This man is very rich. Look at the, look at the caption. Uh, I don't call him gay. Homosexual, mega donor, on going after Christians. We're going to punish the wicked. The wicked that he's referencing are Christians. Um, by the way, this was the atmosphere of the city of Pergamos. Of the seven cities in Asia Minor, the most dangerous of the seven for the Christians was Pergamum. Pergamum, and, I, and we've talked about it before, and I'll go into it, but I want to read a little of this. It, it, the, the danger for Christians in Pergamum was that they could be killed every day because Rome, who ruled the world at the time, had given to Pergamum the privilege of capital punishment. And see, uh, and if you didn't worship the emperor in Pergamum, of which no Christian would, you could actually be put to death. They were killing Christians left and right in that wicked city. And yet God, Call the saints of Pergamum to holiness. Isn't that something to think about? Just a little bit of this. Uh, mega bankrolling, the mega donor bankrolling the LBGT movement and its allies in the Democrat Party says he will continue to, quote, punish the wicked who hold traditional views about sexual morality. Traditional views about sexual morality is that men marry women and women marry men. That's the traditional view. I hate that it's called traditional. It's, it's, it, it's the right view. It's not traditional. It's God's. It's, it's common sense. And it was common sense till the other day. Okay? Um, um, and so much for tolerance. Even in his statement, I thought that tolerance meant I had my viewpoint and I could state it. And you had your viewpoint and you could state yours. And we could exchange ideas and even if it meant we agreed to disagree, nobody shot anybody. Or nobody tried to get anyone fired. Or no one tried to cut off someone else's funding. We just allowed four people to speak their mind. That doesn't exist today. It is the left who are trying to silence the opposition. They don't, they don't want to defeat people like me only and people like you, but they want to silence us. They don't want our viewpoint heard. Just like when they say the science is in. Global warming is a scientific fact. No, there are scientists who dispute that. But those scientists are dismissed. Well, Pastor, don't you think something strange is going on in the weather? Yeah. But I don't know whether or not we've studied the weather long enough to know whether or not what's happening right now is normal. How many years have we been studying the phenomenon of the weather? And you do know that by nature, climates change. That's what the climate does. They used to call it global warming until it got cold. And they, and they had to cancel a few conferences. And they had people who had to be rescued who went to the North Pole to prove that the ice caps were melting. And they had to send people to get them because they like to froze to death. So when those things fail, they shifted from global warming to climate change. That way, you can't get it wrong. If it's colder than normal, that's climate change. If it's warmer than normal, then that's climate change. So what they do is those who scientifically disagree, they just do all they can not to allow their voices to be heard. Are you with me? The mega donor bankrolling the LGBT movement and its allies. Look at this. Despite the legislation of homosexual marriage in all 50 states, tech millionaire Tim Gill said he is not satisfied with the movement's progress. 
He plans to use his immense wealth, corporate influence, and political network to target red states with laws protecting religious people who disagree with the LBGT movement worldview. Nah, it's too hard. Yo, yo, put it back the way it was. I'm trying to look out for the saints. Now, y'all put it back. Now, notice what it says. He's going to use his money, corporate influence, and political network to target states with laws protecting religious people. So I guess we shouldn't be protected because we agree with the Bible. That we, excuse me, we are somehow un-American because we agree with the Bible. That we should, you should lose your position. Or the state should lose, uh, this company should decide not to set up ground in the state of North Carolina. Because in their state, they, this is a backward state that believes that men should attend the men's room and that women should attend the women's room like it has been forever. So to put pressure on us, and I have a story of a little 10-year-old boy, I'm going to read a little bit to you, talking about Pergamos, who was lured into the bathroom by a transgendered female, a man. And once the man got the little 10-year-old. Do I have any 10-year-olds in here? Where's a 10-year-old? Is that a 10-year-old? Who's 10? Stand up. Do I have a 10-year-old boy in here? Is that a 10-year-old? Praise the Lord. All right, you're 10. Everybody's 10. Stand up. Let me see a 10-year-old. 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 Is that any 10-year-olds out here? 10-year-old. Now, who? Huh? Yeah, there you go. Thank you, buddy. Now, come here. Thank, thank you, ladies. Y'all, y'all be serious. This was a boy. Come, come. No, 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 no. It was a girl. Yeah, you, you go back and sit down. See, you were late. You good. You good. You good. Come, come, come here. Ten-year-old girl. Come here. Ten-year-old girl. Ten-year-old girl. I'm, I'm going back to this story, but I want to show you something. Now, now ten-year-old. Ten-year-old. Ten, look at the prettiest little thing you ever seen. Ten-year-old. Ten years old. Ten, ten precious year old. Oh, you got a shot 10 years old. Now, what man? What man who thinks he's a woman belong in the bathroom? I guess I should ask Governor Roy Cooper because he thinks it's a good idea. What man? What man thinks it's a good idea to be in a restroom with this little girl? What man could look at this beautiful little girl and see sexual relations in her? People say that they don't believe demons exist. I can show you a demon. What man, what grown man, see, something's got to be wrong with you. And they wonder why people like me won't shut up. I can't. Ten years old. At ten years old, grown people in here, you know how much she doesn't know. Can I get a witness? You know how much she doesn't even know about herself. You know how much she don't know about life. And you know what her ten-year-old mind should not be exposed to. And yet, there are politicians. Thank you, Doctor. There are people in positions of authority, put that out there on YouTube, who think that it's a good idea for a man who thinks he's a woman, despite all the evidence, to be able to use the restroom 
behind closed doors with her. Now, if you agree with that, I oppose you. Um, we, 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 have, we have no grounds of agreement. I got to pray, to be honest with you, not to despise you. Because something is wrong. Pastor, that doesn't sound too loving. I'm not trying to be. I'm trying to, I'm trying to protect the 10-year-old. Amen. All I can say is, all I can say is, you better be glad they didn't jump on uh, some of the 10-year-olds uh, whose parents I know. The, 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 the picture wouldn't have been a mug shot. It would have been a mug shot. So, law, people who agree with me, this millionaire, he's going to target us. Target laws protecting us, people who disagree with the LGBT movement. Quote, we're going into the hardest states in the country, said Gill. According to an interview published by Rolling Stone. Quote, we're going to punish the wicked. Mr. Gill said his efforts block religious freedom. Isn't that something? Said they block religious freedom bills in southern states. Says, Gill says his efforts to block religious freedoms in religious freedom bills in sub, southern states has already paid off. And you know what? One of the reasons they're paying off because you got Christians today who, more, who are more loyal to a political party than they are loyal to their faith. And what you're doing, I've been trying to tell you, I've been trying to tell you, you're actually voting yourself out of business. Well, we belong to a certain party, and that's just the way we vote. We, we don't care what their position is. That's just what we do. Explain that to God when you stand before him. That's all I got to say about that. Just explain it to the Lord when you stand before him. This is, this is war. These things make society. Can I preach? Make society more dangerous toward us. For, for the Christians today, are, we're accused of being judgmental. We're accused of being highfalutin. We're accused of being people who are holier than thou. And, uh, and they're doing all they can to silence us uh, because we believe uh, in the rights of all human beings, including the unborn. Amen. Including the uh, unborn. And so the enemy, the battle is on. And uh, I'm telling you right now, God is going to anoint us to win. Because we're going to heaven one day. Now, while it's on my mind, let me show you, let me show you the transgender charged with raping the 10-year-old girl in the bathroom. I want to show you this, this now. Now this is this is this is what the current leadership of our state believes should have access to the ladies' room. I thought I would hear a sermon. You hear one. Now, you're the ones who always say, you know, I don't want you to just preach Bible. I, I want it to be relevant. Okay. Put the, put the, all right. Relevance. Relevance. You want relevance? You want relevance? I'll give you relevance. Praise God. Yeah, that's right. You want real? I'll show you real. There it is. Now, look at this. Uh, trial for a Wyoming 
transsexual, accused of raping a 10-year-old girl in a bathroom on Monday. I told you, trans, this is one thing, ladies, that you need to understand. Transsexual, these men who think they're women, are still sexually turned on to women. That's what, you, uh, that's what I don't think you understand. They want access to you. And the most vulnerable place, see, you're going to do most of the work for them. Just think about it. If you're in there using the ladies' room and they want to rape you, they ain't got to take your clothes off or pull anything down or move anything over. You did it for them. Just by using the facilities. That's why they have no business being in there or in a locker room or in a changing room. These, are, these people... Are, are wicked. They have a mental disease. They have a demon. The only thing that can make a man think he's a woman is a demon. Miguel Martinez. A biological male. Notice the new terms now. Notice the new terms. I've never heard of biological male till the other day. Just male. Because, you know, uh, the way I was raised, whatever you are biologically, that's what you are. Amen. I didn't know you could biologically be one thing and mentally be another. You're something else just because you imagine you are. Why are you brothers and sisters in here? Imagine you're white. <laughs> Try that. <laughs> See how it works for you. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Morgan Martinez, a biological male who identifies as a woman. And you know, they, they want you to play the game. And then talking to a man, you wanna, you're standing there trying to be politically correct. I want to choke you. Trying to be politically correct. Talking to a man, talking about, hey girl, how you doing? Ain't no way. You're talking to a man, talking, hello Sheila. You have, you, you've just messed yourself up. See, you, you, you may have become politically correct, but you are biblically incorrect. And all of us are going to stand before God, the God of the Bible, and have to give an account. I'm going to preach in just a minute. I'm, I'm making somebody uncomfortable, but if you get up and walk out, you're going to look guilty. So you got to hang around to the end of service today. I may never see you again. But you'll never forget me. We have nightmares. I can hear him in my sleep. <laughs> uh huh. Uh, who identifies as a woman and goes by the name, <sighs> I hate to tell you, Michelle. <laughs> so, Miguel is now Michelle who allegedly invited a 10-year-old into a bathroom in March and proceeded to grope her breasts and her genitals and penetrate her. After the assault victim, after the alleged assault, thank God for this little girl, she came out and went straight and told her parents. They took her to the medical facility. The nurse completed a sexual assault exam and found redness and abrasions in the girl's genitalia. Ten-year-old, no ten-year-old, no ten-year-old should have experienced that. Her mind is not ready for that. Her body is not ready for that. How selfish can you be to want what you want so bad that you would do this to somebody's 10-year-old child. Just standing there five, two more minutes, Miguel, a grown woman would have went in there. Try that then. But she may be able to protect herself. That's right. That's right. She may have uh, the conceal and carry. Uh, Amen. Oh,
You know what his defense was when they found him and charged him? His argument was the little 10-year-old girl, quote, talking crap, end of quote. She's talking crap. In the, that was his argument. But we have elected officials. Elected. I'm talking about Satan City. Oh, I'm talking about what? What am I doing? I want to keep you. I, wanna, I don't want to get you. I don't want you to get lost because I found out that yeah, I have to explain a lot. I'm trying to show you the intersection. I'm trying to show you that preachers are underserving you not to talk about these things. He stands and entertains and talks to you about relationships and he's cool and he's suave and, and keeps the congregation laughing. But while you are laughing, you are, you are laughing and sailing and singing on the Titanic. So you enjoy your service. You're having a ball. Your pastor's cool. He doesn't even wear a suit anymore. He preaches with no tie, open collar, cool fella. And we have such a good time. But the ship is sinking. Our kids are being affected and our young men need to know it. You know, the Bible talks about, you know, how Satan would use things to um, deceive nations. Bible says in Revelations 22 and 15 says, For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers. The word sorcerers there uh, comes from a Greek word, pharmakia, which gives us our English word, pharmacy. And, and, and pharmakia, pharmacy, drugs. We have a drug epidemic in our society. Opioids. Opioids or, or painkillers. And then th there's a movement afoot to try and decriminalize marijuana, which is a wicked drug. And it is having an adverse effect on people. It's quiet in here. Let me, let me, let me um, show you this. It says, um, I won't read the whole story because I um, don't have the time, but it says, um, marijuana devastated Colorado. Don't legalize it nationally. Last week, Senator Cory Booker, you know, cool Cory, introduced the Marijuana Justice Act. Now let's see. We have the Reproductive Rights Justice Act, which is abortion. We push for that. Now the Marijuana Justice Act. So what justice do we need? Does marijuana need? I know a plant needed justice. The Marijuana Justice Act. In an effort to legalize marijuana across the nation and penalize local communities that don't want to have anything to do with this dangerous drug. You get penalized if you don't want it legal. And they want to make it legal across the country. This is the furthest reaching marijuana legalization effort to date and marks another sad movement in our nation's embrace of a drug that will have generational consequences. Our country is facing a drug epidemic. Legalizing recreational marijuana will do nothing that Senator Booker expects. We, have, we heard many of these same promises in 2012 when Colorado legalized recreational marijuana. In the years since, Colorado has an increase, has seen an increase in marijuana-related traffic deaths, pausing control calls, and emergency room visits. The marijuana back, the marijuana black market has increased in Colorado. 
and not decrease. So it didn't solve that problem. And numerous Colorado marijuana regulators have been indicted for corruption. In 2012, we were promised funds from the marijuana taxes that would benefit our communities, particularly our schools. Dr. Harry Bull, superintendent of Cherry Creek Schools, one of the largest school districts in the state, said, quote, so far, the only thing that, that the legalization of marijuana has brought to our schools has been marijuana. End of quote. In fiscal year 2016, marijuana tax revenue resulted in $156,701,018. Tax, total tax revenue for Colorado was uh, $13,327,123,798. Making marijuana only 1.18% of the state's total revenue. The cost of marijuana legalization in public, in public awareness campaigns, law enforcement, health care treatment, and additional recovery and preventative work uh, is an unknown cost to date. They are warning, do not let this happen to the country. According to the Colorado Department of Public Safety, arrests in Colorado of black and Latino youth for marijuana possession have increased 58% and 29% respectively after legalization. That is, uh, is for blacks, the, the arrest went up 58% since it's been legal. And for Latinos, 29%. Does that sound like a solution to you? Satan's city. See, we're passing laws that we ought not to pass. Oh, my. Uh, how does, young folk, cannabis, how does marijuana affect your body? This is according to WebMD. I'm not a doctor, but I'm a good preacher. If you've ever smoked a joint, or eating a pot-laced brownie, and I don't know why you would. You're hardly alone, more than one in three people. Uh, and let me tell you why I say that. Uh, I'm, I'm 56, uh, but I haven't been 56 for 56 years. <laughs> say amen. amen. You know, you have to grow to be. Some things you, you ought to know better than. You ought not to be able to let anybody influence you and everybody influence you. And if you come up in the church, you ought not let your buddies influence you to do certain things. See, you raise a certain way. You, 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 ought to, you just ought to, ought to just know better. You, you, you got to be strong. Well, I was just curious. Challenge that. Say amen. So this kind of preaching don't give, give you many amens. I'm, I'm on my way. I'm on my way to the Bible, but I'm. Uh, but you told me. You told me you wanted me. You know, Pastor Wood. He just reads the Bible. All right, I'm reading some next day. So I'm one. I'm giving in to popular demand. I'm reading something else. This is from the doctors. Say amen. All right. Most people. Smoke the plants, dried leaves, flowers, stems, and seeds. But marijuana can also be mixed into food. I don't want to give you any ideas. Brownies, cookies, lollipops. Brewed as tea, inhaled with a vaporizer. No matter how it gets into your system, it, it, affects, it affects almost every organ in your body. And your nervous system. Hear me, young folk. And immune system. When you smoke pot, your body absorbs THC right away. If you eat a baked good or another item, 
Uh, it may take much longer for your body to absorb THC because it has to break down in your stomach before it enters your bloodstream. You may notice changes in your body right after you smoke. The, the effects usually stop after three or four hours. Smoking pot can increase your heart rate by as much as two times for up to three hours. For some people, it has caused them to have, according to this report, that's why some people have a heart attack right after they use marijuana. You don't hear about that. Be a bad way to go, wouldn't it? Wouldn't that be a bad way to go? Now I got to preach your funeral, but you died after smoking pot, your heart busted. You had a heart attack and it got leaked out, you were smoking marijuana, and I got to preach your funeral. You land that dead. Whatever you do, saints, <laughs> don't do. It can increase bleeding, lower blood pressure, and affect your blood sugar too. Well, it hadn't affected me yet. Well, okay. But tell y'all to thank the Lord. But don't dare God. Uh, we don't know if marijuana is le linked to higher odds of getting lung cancer, but the process does irritate your lungs. That would be enough. That caused me to stop it. Which is why regular pot smokers are more likely to have an ongoing cough and have uh, and to have lung related health problems like chest colds and lung infections. <coughs> always, always coughing. Right, right. <coughs> always, <coughs> always coughing. Nose always running. Folk don't want to be around you. Just <coughs> gone. Other physical effects include drowsiness, shallow breathing, redness, and uh, red eyes, and dilated pupils. You look like, you praise the Lord, a Halloween. Uh, that's not in the, that's not in the uh, uh, article. That's my commentary. Slow reaction time. That's bad if you're driving. If you're a long-time user, you can have physical withdrawal symptoms like cravings, irritability, sleeplessness, and less appetite when you stop. Now, these reports came from Gallup Analytics, Harvard Medical School, National Institute of, of, on Drug Abuse, the Mayo Clinic, National Highway Traffic and Safety Administrations, so forth and so on, and not, these are not just the opinions of Patrick Wood. Most people use marijuana because the high makes them feel happy, relaxed, or detached from reality. You can stay attached to reality and read the word of God. And Bible says, Bible says, happy is the man, blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. The scriptures will give you this. You, you can get this out the Bible. You get that high out the Bible. Smoking pot can also have uh, less pleasant effects on your mind and mood. Amen. Young folk, a distorted sense of time. I've seen that. Some of y'all don't know what time it is. <laughs> Random thinking, paranoia, anxiety, depression, short-term forgetfulness. These effects usually usually ease up a few hours after you've been doing the drugs. Though you may have heard otherwise, marijuana can be addictive. Nearly 10% of people who use it become dependent on it. It isn't clear whether or not marijuana is a gateway drug, which makes it easy to become dependent on or addicted to Marijuana, it also strengthens many of the drug's mind-altering effects. It's not, listen to this, let me, let me read that again. Um, nearly 10% of people who use it become dependent on, on it. It isn't clear whether marijuana 
is a gateway drug that makes it easier to become dependent on or addicted to marijuana, it also strengthens many of the drugs mind altering effects. If you buy from a legal state regulated dispensary, it can be hard to know exactly how much THC or other compounds are found in it. You don't even know what you're buying from a state regulated place. What you're getting off the street, you might be buying rat poison. Marijuana can also cause more health problems. If you have a condition like liver disease, low blood pressure, or diabetes. Well, I don't have that. How do you know? This won't matter much. But I said, Lord, this is this is be enough to keep me off of it. Right here. If you're a man. If you a man, heavy use could lower your testosterone level. Said, oh no. I ain't going with anything that's going to reduce that. Uh, amen. Praise the Lord. I need all the testosterone I can get. Say amen. Y'all seen that commercial of Big Hurt? Baseball player on TV. <laughs> oh, yeah. You better go get it. <laughs> uh, if you're a man, it can lower your testosterone level. And see, guys, you need your t testosterone to help you carry muscle and size. And keep you from developing. That's right. Breasts. We walk, walk around a brother with all that. Listen to me now. Amen. Amen. Your sperm count, it can affect your sperm count and quality of it. That in turn zaps your libido and fertility. Your wife wonder why you ain't never in the mood. She's standing there, honey, the, the bought lingerie and tried everything. She even tried standing on her hands. Just, and, oh, no, no interest from you. <laughs> oh, you're not, you're not interested in her because you got this little girl in your hand that you're sucking on. Research shows links between marijuana use, this is no revelation here, and mental health problems like depression, anxiety, suicidal thoughts, short-term psychosis, and schizophrenia. While it's not clear if marijuana causes these conditions, it can make them worse. Don't let the devil fool you with witchcraft. Young people, don't let the sorcery, the sorcerer, the wizard get you. Keep that stuff out of your body. You lived your whole life without it. Why do you think you need it now? Praise the Lord. Be a man. Be different. Be different. Stand your ground. Praise the Lord. I know a loved one who laughed at me because I wouldn't take black beauties and wouldn't take certain drugs and wouldn't get into cer a certain scene. They laughed at me. But they ain't laughing now. My God, he who laughs last laughs best. God is a keeper. I can't get much help in here today, but he's a keeper. Oh, even in, even in areas, uh, in, in, in stories, a Washington Post story uh, trying to support marijuana says opponents of the legalization point out that while 
overall fatal crashes rates are a little changed, drivers in fatal crashes are now more likely to test po positive for marijuana in places like Washington. Well, that's a good reason right there not to do it. People are getting into accidents, and they, they're having to open up all kind of uh, clinics and, and things to treat people uh, in these cities where um, marijuana use is, is used. They open up clinics and, uh, uh, to treat people because people are getting sick. The news won't tell you these things. And some say this is not preaching, but it is. There were 47 marijuana-related pause and control centers called centers calls in Colorado, in Colorado in 2015, 47, up from 25 in 2013. People are being poisoned by this drug. And yet, there are those who say that it is harmless. The rate of adult, not children, adult emergency department Visits for marijuana use also increased following the legalization. This was mostly attributed to, to more uh, emergency department visits from tourists who came in from out of town. So I guess the tourists uh, got in trouble because once they got to the states where it was legalized, they tried it. But, you know, uh, any way you look at it, People are getting sick on this harmless drug. I don't see, I don't hear of visits going up from people drinking water. For people doing legal things, this is bad. And, and when these things get passed in the law, see what they want the church to do is to be silent. But you can't be silent. Because who's targeted, who's targeted, you know, for whatever reason, and I, and I have a reason why it is, we're the most vulnerable to all these things. And one of the reasons are is that we don't have dads. We don't have dads in the home. Only 45% of African American households have a married couple. Contrast that with 70% of Hispanics, 80% of whites. We need dads. We need fathers to teach our children. We need to say something about the things that are going on. You know, I told you the other day that as of this year so far, about 10 black men unarmed have been killed thus far as of September the 27th in engagement with the police. And during the same time, 553,000 black babies have been aborted. Who's killing us, saints? Well, the answer is us. 6,000 blacks killed by other blacks in 2015. Nobody marched on that one. 7,400 blacks killed by other blacks in 2016, according to the New York Post. And the numbers go on and on. We are living in Pergamum. We're living in dangerous times. And God is calling on us to stand our ground. Let me wrap this up. The speaker's knowledge is searching. Speaking of Pergamum. He knows that they live in a hostile and difficult place where Satan's seat or where Satan has his throne. I wonder if he's not erecting one in Raleigh. There's certain, uh, this certainly refers to the fact that Pergamum was a center for worship of the pagan god especially emperor cult worship. The first temple was built, the first temple in the empire was established in honor of Augustus in A.D. 29, just 29 years after Jesus' death. Pergamum builds a temple to worship a man, Caesar Augustus. Oh, God help us. At Pergamum, because uh, it was the administrative capital of Asia in succeeding years, the city 
boasted in becoming an official, it became an official Necaros. See, the Necorate was a city, well, it was actually a rank of, of high dignity given to a city from the Roman emperor if they built temples to false gods. That is, they were, they were wicked and proud of it and got their awards for it. Like we see people getting awards today for being wicked. Wickedness can get you a Grammy. Wickedness can get you uh, an Oscar. It can get you an award on The Voice. It can get you an award on American Idol. But every one of us have got to stand before God. Oh, somebody help me here. Not only did they participate in emperor worship, but they worshiped Zeus there. They worshiped Ascalipos, God that had the sign of a snake who was said to be the God of health. A wicked God with a wicked temple. And in his temple, his temple was filled with non poisonous snakes. People would go in and lay there hoping to be touched by those non poisonous snakes so that they could be healed. Needless to say, they were wasting their time. Pergamum was an idolatrous center, praise the Lord, and declared itself to be a place, a place where Christians were, oh my, were in danger. They didn't welcome us. Christians, they were hostile to us. There's a growing hostility to Christianity today. And you see it manifested first and foremost by, upon Christian churches that are closest to the Bible. The churches that are further from Scripture experience very little hostility. The world celebrates the feel-good preacher. The world celebrates the preacher who knows how, who has taken the cross out of the church, who has, who has gotten rid of the choir. Gone are all of the traditional trappings and settings of the church and where we serve the Lord and serve communion, dress down, communion being served in a t-shirt and jeans. Oh God, sacrilege is going on in the house of God. The world loves churches who do stuff like that. But the churches who stand their ground, that who believe that Jesus is Lord, and who take the scriptures literally, we're coming under attack. But this is not bad news. It's good news. Because we serve a mighty God. I just want us to develop the mindset of the Lord's faithful martyr, Antipas. We're getting ready to go home. Antipas was uh, challenged by the, praise the Lord, the government. He was challenged by all that were in authority. The word I'm searching for, he was challenged by the establishment. Christians were being sacrificed. And all the only thing that they had to do to save their lives was to just confess Caesar as Lord. And I want you to know many of them, praise the Lord, uh, gave in and confessed Caesar as Lord. Mm -hmm. But when they got to Antipas, they said, confess Caesar as Lord and you will live. Yes, I had Antipas when he said to them, mm -mm, Jesus is Lord. And uh, they said to him, do you not know that the whole world is against you? Antipas said, if the whole world is against me, then Antipas is against the whole world. But Jesus is Lord. They took the martyr, oh Lord, and dipped him in a cauldron. And they burned him alive. As a matter of fact, Antipas, God Jesus' faithful martyr, he was, he was roasted. Yes, sir, they burned him alive. But when they burned him, when they roasted him, the Christians who were in line, and it was a whole long line of them, all of them began to fall into a familiar chant. 
when they roasted Antipas, the Christians began to chant, Jesus is Lord. 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 As a matter of fact, the more they killed him, the stronger they got. I wonder today who in here is going to wax strong. The more the devil try to hold us down, the stronger we're going to get. Because we, tr we serve the true and living God. He is a healer. He is a way maker. And I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to every man that believes. Look at what's happening to our city and to our state. And with the laws, we are legis legislating immorality. We are passing wickedness and making it a law. But I thank God that that's not the only thing that's going on. I see God moving by his spirit. I see the power of the Savior being displayed everywhere. He's still a keeper and he's still a way maker. You just got to open your eyes and you will see. Good God Almighty, sometimes things that look like a defeat is a victory. Sometimes when they toss it out of court, that's all right because God is going to move because there is a judge who is stronger than the judges down here on this earth. In fact, the Bible says that God sitteth in the congregation of the north. He serves over the human judges. Aren't you glad that you have the real judge on your side? Aren't you glad that the king of kings is on your side? I feel just like Job today. I know that my Redeemer lives. I know. Oh, Grab somebody by the hand and tell them, I know that my Redeemer lives. The word Redeemer means vindicator. The word Redeemer means the one who will make it right. Yes! Sometimes your feeling gets hurt. Yeah! God took your mother home. Yes! It gets dark sometimes. But I want you to know that the Lord is in charge. And even here in Pergamos, he's still a keeper. He's still able. Yeah! Somebody praise him in here. If you believe that you're going to make it, why don't you leap up and down and declare it's all right now. It's all right now. I have victory even as I leap. I've got joy. All in my soul, I have peace in my mind because Jesus, he said in the text, I know where you live. What is he saying? I know your address. I know your street number. I know your apartment number. I know your condo number. I know where you live. I'm glad that when the devil knocked on my door hallelujah and temptation rings the doorbell we serve a God who said 
there have no temptation taken you but such as is common to man who will with the temptation when the devil rings your doorbell good God almighty it's gonna ring again who's here it's escape escape comes because when temptation comes the God of the Bible he sends a way of escape so you can bear it I'm here to tell you that you're going to escape I'm here to tell you that you win right where you are I'm here to tell you that God is able Somebody shout something in here. Hey, hello. Somebody dance in the devil's face. Somebody shout uh, in Pergamos. We're going to make it. I want to pray for a few folk who are going through the principalities the ruling spirits, the devil has come. He's come at you in a series. He's come. I'll tell you what he's trying to do. He's trying to silence you. Hallelujah. Brother Uda, I know it's not easy. Oh, young men, I know it's not easy. Lost your mother, lost your daughter, lost your sister. But in the midst of your loss, don't let him silence you. You may not even feel it, but you still got to say hallelujah. Anyhow, I wonder, I wonder if there's anybody here that will tell the Lord hallelujah. Anyhow, yeah. Got a headache, hallelujah. Got a backache. Trouble in my home. Trouble on the job. Money funny. Change strange. Hallelujah. Anyhow, yeah. Pray for me, Pastor. Pray for me. I'm in this world. We're living in Satan's town. But I want to make it. I want, I want the Lord to keep me. Oh. I don't care if you've fallen. God's able to give you power. To get back up. And to go on. In the name of the Lord. If God is talking to you. Come to the altar. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we're going to pray. And God's going to touch you. I messed up. But I'm going to get up. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'm not losing my joy. I'm not losing my way. Because he is good God Almighty. He's my help. He's my strength. He's my sword. He's my shield. I want to pray for some young men. Good God Almighty, stay off the drugs. Stay away from the alcohol. Stay away from the sin. You got to be a strong young man. You ought to take courage in being a strong man. Good God Almighty, would the Lord save me when I was 16. And I enjoyed, I don't get it, I enjoyed sitting close to the front. I enjoyed, mother right there, I told her, mother, I told her some things today in the new members class. I said, if you don't believe me, see Mother Turner, ask her. I won't even bring up what I said, ask her, she'll tell you. But, but uh, you young men here, I don't, I don't get it, praise the Lord. How, how can you be so, so excited about nonsense? How do we get so uh, captivated by games? 
And I don't understand any about Game Boys and all. You know, I can buy any of them things. I can buy all of them. I don't have any. I have no interest. A grown man. I'm grown. I'm grown. I'm grown. I have no interest in that. Warcraft. All these games. Praise the Lord. Games that other countries make that they don't let their children play. But they sell them to dumb Americans. And we buy it. We buy it. Now, can't pay you to buy a Bible. But you have the whole collection. They know what they're doing. It's, 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 a part of, it's a part of the larger scheme to bring us down. There are people who are, uh, who are vested in keeping blacks, now I want to get racial, not racist, but racial, in keeping blacks emotional. Just get us all lathered, lathered, lathered up in an emotional tin, tailspin, a tizzy. I told them in the new members class today, I wouldn't give a person. That kind of power over me. Here I am. I'm a mild-mannered gospel preacher. I'm in the grocery store. I'm acting like everybody else. I'm acting like everybody else. I picked up the bread, put it in the basket. Picked up the whatever, put it in the basket. Got this, just like everybody else. I'm just like I'm just like the rest of the black folk in there. Just like the rest of the white people. Like the Hispanics, you know. I'm just like everyone else. Pushing the thing. Amen. Praise the Lord. Got this. Got the toothbrush, toothpaste. Just, you know. Got the just for men. Picked up. <laughs> you know, got to get your. <laughs> just like everybody else. And then one, just one person. One, one white person. One, just one redneck. One. One, 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 one person who, who may not, who may not have went to school, but three days, just one person can say, nigger. And then all of a sudden, ah! I, I go from being a human being to a ravishing animal. And I turn over the, pull, turn over my tray, pull over the shelf, cuss everybody out. Why are you behaving like this? He called me, he called me that word. You mean to tell me? You mean to tell me you are that weak? That that one word has that much power over you? Make you lose your dignity, lose your self-respect, then lost your job? Because they're gonna fire me from the church. You reputate all that's gone. One word. Just one word. All, all it took was just. Uh, he, I mean, he didn't have to be anything. Hat turned backwards, clothes dirty. He could, I mean, he could, ain't got to be nobody special. Filthy, just a nigger. <laughs> and, I, and I just become, I mean. There's something wrong with us. I don't care what nobody said. They better not call me that because they call me that. I'm going to kill them. And you going to jail. Going to jail. And then when they finish making you, they'll be, they'll be calling you a whole lot more than that. Say amen. That'll be, a, that'll be a mild term. You don't like my preaching. I'm trying, I'm trying to get us to see something. God's calling us to be strong. God's calling us to think. God's calling us God's calling us. God's calling us. Well, you know, uh, Pastor, I, I don't know if I agree with that. But what part? I'm right on all kinds. I haven't missed. You shouldn't, you shouldn't do drugs, young brother, if for no other reason, I'm going to give you a good reason, it's because they expect you to. There is the soft bigotry of low expectations. 
we call mediocrity good. When we miss, we applaud. Raise the standard. Raise the bar. If we raise the bar, our people will come up to it. Raise the bar. Raise the bar. Didn't raise right. I got the clothes. But this stuff means, it means a lot to me because you do. And, and, and the greatest way to beat the devil is just don't walk into his trap. So, you know, I mean, he... I mean, he's a devil. He can set all the traps he wants. That's what devils do. Devils set traps. That's his job description. I'm the devil. I set traps. That's what devils do. They set traps. That's what the devil does. The devil set traps. Good. Let him set traps. You know what you do? You avoid them. He sets them, you avoid them. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He set them all. He can, he, he can, put, he can set traps everywhere. But you know what? God always clears out a path. Lift your hands and begin to worship. Woo. Just lift your hands and begin to worship. Worship, worship, worship. Everybody worship the Lord. Everybody worship the Lord. Everybody worship the Lord. Amen. Everybody worship the Lord. I know, I know this wasn't a traditional sermon. I know you felt like you was at watching the news, but I'm trying to tell you what's going on. I want us to get strong and get prepared for this big this big donor as he attack our state. You corporate workers, I want to pray for you. That God give you wisdom. That God give you wisdom. Because the corporations are becoming increasingly hostile to Christians. And yet it is the will of God that you work in corporate America. It is the will of God that you let your light shine. It is the will of God that you perform. Teachers in the private school. Teachers in the public school. Saints who work in government. It is the will of God that you work in these areas. Yes it is. But it is the will of God that you stay clean. It is the will of God that you uphold the blood-stained balance. And let me tell you something. I'm talking to you when I say that he's a keeper. Somebody just lift your hands. Just lift your hands. Oh, I'm preaching to you now. It is the will of God that you go to college. Praise the Lord. Our point when we preach about what's going on on the college campuses is not to say don't go to college. Go! But go with your eyes open. Go prepared. Go knowing that God is, has already been there and paved the way for you. Kyla scored a hundred. Carries when you go, you can too. The other college students who been, you can do it. You got to do it. But you can't, you can't lose your burning. Go to school and then come back after one semester and we can't find you. Can't get you to come to church. You're right, Bishop. Then if you do go to one, go to one of them worldly churches. What's wrong with you? Raised in holiness. Then, then, then walk away from holiness. I'm over here now. Where we can we can wear we wear tennis, we wear flip-flops. Uh, T-shirts. Oh, we don't, you know, we we don't do any of that dressing up stuff when we go to our church. That's where I go now. Oh, right. You go where where God is not special. Because I know I know what people do. I know how people dress when they go somewhere special. And as black folk, I could hit some of y'all. Now I'm gonna sound racist. Now I could hit some of you because some of you, you know what? Some of you, it's just. And, 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 and for y'all please take this the way I'm saying to some of y'all the, the white man's ice is just cold that's just all there's to it now given the history of this country a, a black man a, a black black folk the on, for a long time the only place we could wear a suit see white folk have always had places to go but for us the only place the only place for a long time that we could dress up and look like somebody was church. 
Um, and, and we had a Sunday suit. And, and, and especially in the South, and you were boy all week long until Sunday. You went from being boy on Sunday to Deacon Jones, Reverend so-and-so, Mr. so-and-so, and look at you now. It's like you don't know your history, and now you come to church, the one place that God had reserved for you to look like somebody and be somebody, and now you've turned on that place and forsook the one institution where you could go looking like somebody. God is not pleased. And I mean it. Don't get me started. This is tight, but it's right. I've been trying to figure out how to tell you. God used to be special. I told y'all the story. I'm getting ready to pray. I told you the story. Have I raised offer? Oh, my. I told you the story. I told you the story when I was dating Pam. I'll never forget. I'm getting ready to pray, y'all. Just stay, stay on the altar. And uh, because the altar's flat, so it ain't hurting your heels. Now, if you just wore shoes that ain't comfortable, I understand they look good, or don't they? Uh, <laughs> but you look good. See, yeah. Oh, the price we pay for fat. Price we pay for fashion, boy. <laughs> Men do it too, though, because God knows sometimes, boy. <laughs> Standing after service, feet be killing you. <laughs> Lord, help us. But I visited her one day, I'll never forget. I was working second shift. You. You, you, you. And uh, I'll never forget, she, she taught me a lesson. God is so good. I like to work out, so I'd go to the gym, get my workout in. On the way, the Pam's house was between the gym and where I live. So I stopped by there, going from the gym home. I mean, I wouldn't, I didn't show up with no wife beaters, you know, no yeah, tank man. top or nothing. No, but. Uh, right about the third time, I just called her. I just stopped by. Out of, it was just convenience. Comfortable. Just left the gym. You know what she told me? She said, don't come to see me looking like that. I, I, I'm your girlfriend and, and, and might end up being your wife. You got to treat me better than that. And you know what? You know what? She didn't make the world. She didn't die on the cross. She didn't write the Bible. She don't have my next breath in her hands. But she was right. And if this is applicable to a human being, to a person, how much more to God? We have begin, begun to curse our own privilege. You don't hear nobody talk about clothes and fashion show and folk trying to outdress each other like we do. The ones who for a long time couldn't afford to dress up. See, God can't please you. Then when the Lord bless you when you can look nice, we curse that. We find a problem with that. So the Lord don't know what to do. So when they were poor and struggling, Lord, if you were just blessed me. <laughs> then he bless you. Now you complain about that. God, judge, God don't know what to do. So make you look like somebody and some, someone else is going to look at you. Hmm. I know what you, you think. You're better than me. You don't know what I think. <laughs> but you know what? You ought to be better than certain behaviors. You ought to be better than putting drugs in your body. Oh, she saya. You ought to be better than lawless behavior. You ought to be better than leaving the Lord. Now, I'm going to talk to you all about this woke thing in a little while. And you know what? All the movements that come out, you know who's susceptible to them? I mean, it, it, it's a pattern. Everything against God. Everything, we're the first one to catch on to. Why? Did you ever ask yourself, why? Why is this so appealing to me? 
Why do we, other folk will look at it, it don't take but two minutes. Garbage. With us, you got to get the FBI, you got to have all kinds of things to get us to see. That's the devil. You got to be stronger than that. You are right. You are serving the God who made everything. Lord God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh God. Before they taught Todar to, to tequila. Is that right? Because I know there's a drink called tequila. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't want to be talking about no liquor. Before they taught us all the meanings of these praise words, blacks were doing it all the time. By nature, we were lying prostrate before the Lord, lifting our hands to the Lord, dancing before the Lord. We wrote the book on Shabbat. Can't nobody holler like we can. All that. And we end up, and then after, we, 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 we let the devil talk us out of. Began to make, cause us to make fun of the way we do. Well, you know, all that preaching and stuff, I don't, I don't get anything out of it. Since when? Your mama got something out of it. Your daddy did. You did. I'm through with that now. Uh, that's been balled up in me for about uh, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. So it just came out today. Mother, I have to tell you. Dear Jesus. Oh, listen. I know some of y'all don't understand, but you know why you don't? Because you're not the pastor. One leader. One leader. Young people, listen to me. I love you. I'm telling you something that'll help you if you'll hear me. Hear me. God's got something special for you. But so does Satan. God's special. You'll love it. Satan's special will destroy you. It'll get you out of Christ. He could get you out of Christ and make you a billionaire. But you're going to die and go to hell. So what's the point? Stay in Jesus. Amen. Stay with Jesus. Stay with Jesus. Father, bless our, these young people. On this Youth Sunday, our young boys and young girls, our young men and young women. Oh God, our old men and old women. The adults. We're living, Lord, in Pergamos. Satan's city. Powerful men with big money. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. They lined up against us. Mm. My God. I just Oh Lord, I got somebody got to pull my coattail. I just, I can't even finish my prayer. Thank you, Jesus. When I said powerful, powerful men with big money. You know what I heard, brother, second assistant? I heard, why do the heathen rage? And the people imagine a vain thing. The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers took counsel together against the Lord. And against his anointing, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. Hallelujah. 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 Look at the word of God. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Begin to praise him right now. God is laughing at the devil's plan. Glory. Glory. Satan's plan for your life. The devil, God is laughing at it. The trap that Satan has set. 
God's laughing at it. Praise him right now. Praise him right now. If you believe, if you believe, if you believe, if you believe, you can thank him. Hallelujah. It is humor. It's humorous to God. Woo! Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. Praise him. Oh, you who are streaming, God says laugh at the devil. God says praise him in the devil's face because even though the enemy has sophisticated plans, the God of the Bible says I'm going to laugh at him because the plan will not work. 